Hello everyone. So in this series we are going to discuss the histology of the skin and its appendages with Dr. Minde. So the skin is part of the Sorry for that, it's a bit too noisy. Okay, so the skin, these are the objectives, the functions, the structure, dermis, epidermis, hypodermis, differences between thick and thin skin, appendages of the skin and the applied anatomy. So the skin is part of the integuments, okay, integument system. So skin and its appendages. And you have um, the skin being the largest organ in the body almost 15 to 20 percent of the total body weight so we have actually three layers epidermis dermis and hypodermis the epidermis is ectodermal in origin is the outer part and the dermis is the inner which is mesodermal in origin what are the functions of the skin it will protect against injury desiccation or drying and infection helps to regulate body temperature helps in the absorption of uv radiation and sensory so you can sense temperature, touch, or pain from the external environment through the skin. The epidermis is a superficial layer and is usually a vascular. Okay. No blood vessels within the epidermis. Name four cells in the epidermis. That's a very common question. Name four cells and state their functions. We have keratinocytes. These are the um, ones that may majorly form the epithelium. Okay. So they're the ones that protect from desiccation and so on and so forth, so protection. Then melanocytes, of course, melanin, skin color, longer hand cells, antigen presenting cells, so they're immune cells, macular cells, which are the kind of receptors, okay, for touch. So the epidermis forms interdigitations with the dermis, so you have the epidermal ridges interdigitate with the dermal papilla, and that's what forms the fingerprints. The digitation between epidermal ridges and the dermal papillae and the fingerprints. So you have layers of the epidermis. Usually, how do you remember from the deepest layer of the epidermis? You see good small girls like candy. So candy for stratum corneum, C corneum is the most superficial. Good small girls like candy. So stratum corneum is the most superficial layer has non-nucleated keratinocytes. So as you move from the um, lowermost layer, you lose the organelles. So by the time you get to the top where you have the cornea, there are no nuclei, no organelles. This layer continuously sheds in a process we call desquamation. Good small girls like candy. So corneum L is lucidum. It's a clear homogeneous layer Okay, only found in thick skin. Where do we find thick skin? In the plantar and palmar skin. So keratinocytes in the lucidum layer have no nuclear or organelles. So even here, no nuclear or organelles, but they contain a lading, which is a transformation product of keratohyline. Okay, keratinocytes contain a lading, a transformation product of keratohyline. Good small girls like candy. So this is the second G. Valves. So stratum granulosum is the most superficial layer that contains nuclear. Remember lucidum and corneum have no nuclear in their superficial, but this is the most superficial layer with nuclear and the keratinocytes usually have membrane coated granules which we call lamella bodies in the stratum granulosum. Stratum spinosum, good small spinosum S composed of few layers of polyhedral ovoid nucleated keratinocytes. So the keratinocytes have are polyhedral in shape and they have ovoid nuclei. They're usually attached by desmosomes. These keratinocytes um, usually in the stratum spinosum have the ability to divide. Stratum germinativum, this is the deepest layer of the epidermis. It's also called stratum basal. Good. Let's say good small girls. This is the first G. Stratum germinativum or basal is the deepest layer. You have one layer of columna or high keyboard or keratinocytes and having features of active mitosis. Okay, 
they are attached onto the basal lamina by what you call hemidesmosomes. These are basal um, modifications. So they are attached onto basal lamina by hemidesmosomes, and basal keratinocytes usually migrate and proliferate to cover damaged or destroyed epidermis. So the stratum germinativum contains melanocytes and marker cells for skin color and for touch. Again, stratum basal and spinosum together, they are called the malpigian layer. Okay. Name two layers of the malpigian layer, stratum basal and spinosum. Basal is the same as germinativum. So this is what we are referring to. So this is the epidermis of the skin. This is the dermis. And I told you the epidermis has ridges that interdigitate with dermal papillae. So these are dermis, this is epidermis. So good small girls like candy. Remember, lucidum is only in thick skin, palma and planta. So good small girls like candy. So in conium and lucidum, there are no organelles and no nuclei in the keratinocytes. All these are keratinocytes. Spinosum, germinativum, highly mitotic. So the most superficial there with nuclei is the granulosum. So this is thin skin, so you will not really appreciate this is your corneal, corneum layer, okay? And there's no lucidum in thin skin. So we can ask you, tabulate the differences between thick skin and thin skin. So that's the thickness, then the location. Where do you find thick skin? In the palms and soles and thin skin mm -hmm. in the majority of body surface. Thick skin in the fingerprints, uh, uh, fingerprints are present on the thick skin, and then thick skin lacks hair follicles, erector pili, and sebaceous glands, but thin skin has hair follicles, erector pili, and sebaceous glands. Stratum corneum in thick skin is thick. Lucidum is present in the thick skin. Granulosum may be absent or single layer in the thin skin. Spinosum, stratum spinosum is present in both. The dermis usually is made up of two layers, papillary dermis and reticular dermis. Papillary dermis is the one that interdigitates with the stratum germinativum of the epidermis. So it has a lot of cells with loosely and irregularly arranged collagen and elastic fibers. The cells in the dermis, you have mast cells, fibroblasts, and macrophages. Remember, cells in the epidermis, we see it, keratinocytes, langerhans, melanocytes, macules. But in dermis, you have fibroblasts, mast cells, macrophages. So the dermal papilla interdigitate with epithelium, epithelial ridges, and again, papillary dermis will contain capillary loops and what you call Meissner's corpuscles. Meissner's corpuscles are receptors for touch. We can ask you list the receptors found in the skin. So we have seen the marker cell of the epidermis for touch, crude touch, Meissner's corpuscle and papillary dermis for fine touch. So this is how Meissner's corpuscle looks like. Okay? It's embedded within the dermal papillae. Reticular dermis is deeper to the papillary dermis. So from epidermis, you go to papillary dermis, then reticular dermis. It's the major portion of dermis with collagen and elastic fibers and encapsulated nerve endings. And a good example are the Paxinian corpuscles, pressure receptors, Krauss for cold, okay, Krauss for cold. So those are the encapsulated receptors. So receptors of the skin, market cell in the epidermis for touch, Meissner's corpuscle in the papillary dermis for fine touch, Paxinian corpuscle, which is encapsulated nerve ending in the reticular dermis for pressure, and Krauss for cold. Okay. So when you see this, we'll bring a picture in steeplechase. This is always Paxinian corpuscle. So you have a nerve ending and it is encapsulated. Okay. So all this is connected tissue around the nerve ending. So cells of the epidermis, melanocytes, synthesize melanin. So they use tyrosinase, which is sensitive to UV. So basically for synthesis of melanin. So remember, in, um, in dark people, there are large melanocytes that are resistant to degradation, while light people have small melanocytes that are easily degradable. Langerhans cells are antigen-presenting cells. 
for immune role, they come from the mesoderm. Merkel cells of the epidermis, mechanoceptors, they come from neural crest. Langerhans, mesoderm, Merkel's neural crest. Okay, and both therefore touch.